Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwin, and over there we have John Lewandowski. Hey. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. All righty. So why we're here today? Well, this time. <laughs> um, let's just talk about the Arizona Coyotes. We said this in our earlier video. Um, during our, our recap of the game. Where will Arizona end up? Will they stay? Will they go? Who knows? That's right, the real right. question right now. No one knows, but that's the real question right now. All right. So off the top, the things we do know. One, the team's been in financial turmoil for a while. Since 2010. All right. So the league owned them at one point in time. New owner right. came in, tried to save them. But the city's just not ha the state's just not having it at this point. No. It's literally become that. The state is just not having it at this point. Glendale has cut all ties with the with the Arizona Coyotes. Right. So now that leaves them with a big problem. Because now you just switched your name back to the Arizona Coyotes. If you move back to Phoenix, you have to go back to the Phoenix Coyotes. Right. It's going to be a requirement by the arena as part of the deal. They're not going right. to do that. So you got a few options here. All right. So this is just the news release from Glendale, Arizona. Okay. Right. This is for a media release of the contractors of the public event center there. Sports and Entertainment District grows triggers in Glendale to not renew the Arizona Coyotes agreement beyond the 2021-22 season. Fine. This is a season. All right. The agreement provides that either party decides not to renew for an additional year, providing it is written notice each year on or before December 31st. Right. We're thankful to the NHL and Arizona Coyotes for being a part of the Glendale community for the last 18 years, said the city manager, Kevin Phelps. The decision to renew the operating agreement with the Coyotes was not made overnight or in a vacuum. Right. If you're wondering what he means by in a vacuum, means that they had an emergency meeting and they just sucked up a bunch of information at one point in time and boom, you have a you have an answer. Right. right. Just to clear that up for people a little bit so no one's confused. Um they weighed the opportunities, key stakeholders, and expert economists in arena management, firm and with our city council. All right. Bump said that the future of sports and entertainment never look brighter. More than a billion dollars of investment has occurred over the, in the district over the past three years. Well, yes, because most of that is going to the Arizona Cardinals. All right. All right. So that's, that's just that out of the way. I'm going to say that yeah. right now. Most of that money went to the Arizona Cardinals. None of it went to the Coyotes. Right. Not a dime. Because if they wanted them to stay, they'd have put money in. Right. It's self-investment. All right. So there's that. Over the next year, the city will be announcing new projects that will in it, in generate incredible excitement for the residents, visitors, and stakeholders. As amazing as sports and entertainment district is today, over the next several years, will be transformative and momentum continue. All right. But that being said, yeah. yeah, that's basically them saying, you're not making us money. 
So bye. All right. All right. All right. So with that being said, well, where will the Coyotes play their 2022-23 season? All right. All right. The thing that does leave us a bit of a problem. It does. All right. The problem now, Phoenix. All right. Me and John kind of talked about this a little bit before the show. Phoenix, as much as it's a possibility, it's not. Right. Based on two things. One, the attendance there during from 03 to during 0304 season was horrid. Right, it was. And they went to the playoffs yeah. and had a half empty building during the playoffs. Right. All right. The Suns, Mercury, and Arizona Rattlers Indoor Football League all play there. There's no room for an NHL team. Right, there isn't. Just not gonna work. All right, so here we go. Other cities, all right. With all the teams getting the expansion out west, I would not be surprised to see Arizona move to Quebec. That's one. The only right. problem that they have is that the Videotron Center is not equipped for the NHL. Right. Okay. That's one. All right. So the other reason, and I'm going to say this, the reason that Quebec moved in the first place had nothing to do with money. Right. It had everything to do with the Montreal Canadiens not wanting them there anymore. You go across the pond and you're in, two, oh, what is that, Trey, Trey Rivers? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Then, on top of that, you do a hop, skip, and jump, and you're in Laval. From Laval, you cross another river, and you're in Montreal. Right. So the hop, skip, and a jump thing is getting kind of old here. Right. <laughs> you know, and that does cut into finances a bit when it comes to the NHL. Well, yeah. Now, let's talk about this, because... This is something that I have been interested in and curious on how it would work. Yeah. Right, the Dallas Stars, to the to the credit that I still don't like that they kept the name Stars, even though it makes sense in Dallas, the Minnesota North Stars were... Let's just not go into it. Right. But the Stars have been a success in Dallas. Need any proof of that? Go watch the Winter Classic versus Nashville. Right. Let's just say they sold it out. All right. So, with that being said, we have Houston. Houston would add a, ha, add Arizona to being a legit Central Division team. Right. Which would make absolute sense on why all of this is happening. Yeah. They have the Toyota Center, which is extremely ready to play. And you're bringing interest in from, you have interest from Tillman Furtada. 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 I'm trying to say his name right. He is the owner of the Houston Rockets. He said in 2017, as I mentioned before, I'm interested in possibility bringing a NHL team to Houston, but I will have to. It, but it will have to be a deal that works for my organization, the city, the fans of the NHL throughout the region. The NHL right. Board of Governors, we are in the very early stages of evaluating that. That was back in 2017. 
At the time, from 2003 to 2013, the Toyota Center was home to the Houston Arrow, which me and John remember from our childhood very well. Yeah. yeah. Or very well, sorry. Um, we actually had a pretty good rivalry with them. Both points. Yeah, we did. All right. Second basis. All right. Let's not do this again, but Hamilton. Hamilton's another one of those teams where you're so close to Toronto and Buffalo, I doubt it happens. Right. right. Hamilton in Canada, too close. They do have an NHL. They do have the first Ontario Center, which sits seats about 17,000 people, which is more than enough for an NHL game. Right. All right. And we're going to put the wild cards in here. All right. So we're going to go with the wild card. Those are the projected by Yahoo Corp. Right. It was posted about an hour ago. So with that being said, let's go with the cities that have All righty. We go with every major sports city that has an ability to carry a team in the in the league. All right. All right. So we're going with that. We're also going to look at you have Kansas City. Right. right. They have an arena. They've had an arena before. Yep. All right. The Atlanta, Atlanta, they still have an arena. They can play there. Right. All right. Cleveland. Cleveland could hold an NHL team. Yeah. May not be suitable for Columbus. It may give Columbus a reason to relocate, All which right. is one of the things the owner has talked about. All right. Toronto adding a second team. Strong possibility. All right. All right. All right. So then we add on Milwaukee, Pfizer Forum. Could do it. It's possible. Orlando, another one. Possible. Not like Florida needs another team, but possible. Miami, another city with an arena. Possible, but not plausible. All right. Providence. Rhode Island gets a team. Possible, but not probable. <laughs> Interesting kicker. The O2 Arena. In London. Possible. Geographically not possible. Right. Uh, All right. So then we go with what do we have next? Well, with that, we've got to uh, ward out almost every major football arena, <laughs> with the exception being Detroit. Detroit's indoor and Minnesota's indoor could house a hockey team. All right, so that eliminates <laughs> all of that. All right. Baseball stadiums get eliminated automatically. Right. So then we talk about Altera Center. North Dakota. Right. North Dakota is probably the one place no one ever talks about, but hockey would thrive there. Right. Hockey would definitely thrive in North Dakota. Portland, right. another one of those cities. 
hockey would thrive in Portland. The Portland Winterhawks, for lack of a better term, have always had a good turnout. Yeah, they have. Okay. So now we get into the eh part of it all. Okay. So you have, let's see, as far as other, uh, other cities that could hold an NHL team, let's just see what Google has to offer us. There we go. NHL cities that could use an NHL team. This was posted back in 2018. So fairly well, I will I get through the meandering of it all. We already said Atlanta. Austin, Texas could. Not right. possible, but could. Baltimore, possible. Right. What you name it. Who knows? But Baltimore, naturally being so close to Washington, D.C., may present small problems. Right. Um, the other part with Baltimore is, if you really look at Baltimore, are we really going to have another team in Baltimore named after a bird? Right. Because that is a, a uh, question a lot of us have. Cincinnati, right. possible, but because of Columbus, question marks. You have some lag going on. I don't know if it's worked itself out on your end. You were lagging for a while. Yeah, I had to uh, slow down with my internet for a second. Okay, Sorry, guys, please bear with us. All right. So, with that being said, like I said, Cincinnati, it could hold a hockey team. Yeah, 100% sold on it just based off of uh, they do have an ECHL team. The yes, they do. Titles, but their arena is grossly outdated. Yeah. They had the Cincinnati uh, Mighty Ducks at one point in time, and that team flopped within two years. Right. So that, that's something the league is trying to avoid at this point. Yeah. Cleveland is another one of those things. Even though the NHL has tried in Cleveland with the Barons uh, from 90, uh, 1976 to 78, it is it doesn't hurt that Quicken Loans Arena is NHL ready. Right. Halifax. Please. Please move to Halifax, Arizona and become the Highlanders. <laughs> you would be a running joke for me for the rest of my podcast career. All right. But Halifax is known. Sidney Crosby's from there. Nathan McKinnon's from there. Al McKinnon's right. from there. There's a lot. That part of Nova Scotia doesn't really have hockey. Not to no, mention no. it has a 400,000 plus population with, that would undoubtedly probably embrace an NHL team. Right. We already talked about Hamilton and the market for that. Yes. Because Ottawa and everybody else is too far away. Right. All right. Hamilton, we already talked that out with about the Canadians, Montreal. Or not Montreal, Toronto and Buffalo. Hamilton with Toronto and Buffalo. Sorry about that. Hartford, the Whalers. (laughs) Oh, how I forgot about that. (laughs) I didn't. Let's just not give them any hope at this point. You know, UConn would have a horrible problem with that. All right. Hear me when I say this. I think the person doing this was thinking they were funny. But Helsinki, Finland. Yeah. In 2018, the Winnipeg Jets and the Florida Panthers played in Helsinki, Finland. It sold out in five minutes. The money that they could create there would be possible for an NHL team. 
Yeah, it would. Geographically, yeah, almost impossible. Right. There's no way with COVID going, this is going to work. No. All right. Houston, we already went through that one. Indianapolis would be an interesting one. Yeah, it would. Because though they have an ECHL team and they get a good turnout, mostly from Rockford fans who travel to Indianapolis. Right. They are. Uh, they have the Indy Fuel there. Um. You know, they're more of a racing city and cultural small town. I've been through Indianapolis. It's not that big, actually. It's actually no, it than Milwaukee. It has a big city feel to it, but it just doesn't have it. Now, let's talk about this real quick. Does anybody know where Wayne Gretzky started his hockey career? I don't remember. He played for the Indianapolis Racers. Oh, yeah. In 1976, 77, in the WHA, which was outdrawing New England, Quebec, Winnipeg, and Edmonton. Kansas City. They've been ready for years. They have. In 2007, the Pittsburgh Penguins were actually considering moving there. Right. To the newly built Sprint Center, which never amounted to much. No, it didn't. Hear this. Mexico City. As much and as weird as it would sound. Right. They said Nashville would never work. LA would never work. Dallas would never work. Florida would never work. Tampa Bay would never work. Right. Atlanta, they tried it twice. It worked both times. It's just the ownership was bad. Right. You say these cities don't work. But think of it this way. If Arizona was to move to Mexico City, would Arizona really have to travel that far? No. All right. Definitely would be interesting, though. I'll give you that. All right. One of the other things, and I hate every time these things happen, Mm -hmm. because me and John both know the rumblings that always happen every time. Yeah. Milwaukee. Yes, we could house an NHL team. As it says in this article, let's just start here. Watch this. The Nashville Predators top minor league affiliate, the Milwaukee Admirals, have been held down, have held down the fort in Milwaukee in various leagues since 1970s. In terms of attendance, they have been they have had consistent success. But for the NHL and dreams of capturing a city like the Green Bay Packers would have been the goal. They just opened an NHL or opened, at, this is in 2018, so I'm reading the article to you. Right. They just opened an NHL ready arena in the Pfizer Forum, who currently host the Milwaukee Bucks and Marquette Golden Eagles. Also to prove to be a lure for the NHL. Right. On the downside of that, Milwaukee is a blue collar city. We're not going to be able to afford $50 to sit upstairs every day. We're not going to no. be able to afford $125 to sit down by the glass. It just right. doesn't happen. You see that the, the brewers to sit downstairs is like, what, 75 bucks? Right. So yeah. That, it, it's like 75 bucks, but on an average building, on an average building, like in New York, it's 104 to 120 just to sit in the middle level. Right. I'll put this out there too. We are a blue collar city. We'll go to a baseball game maybe every three years, a Bucks game maybe every five years. Admirals were their season tickets, man. It's like. See, how do I put it? Wisconsin people are very conservative with their money. Yeah. 
And and I just don't think that the lure is there financially for an NHL team. All right. No. All right. Unfortunately. All right. Now here's And that would also mean probably losing the Admirals, unless they just became the NHL team, the Admirals. Correct, which would invite us to moving right back in with the Bucks and then Right. And then, you know, what happens with the Predator at that point? It's like it, it, it wouldn't be the best fit, unfortunately, for us. And, it, and, and fortunately, for not, I, it's, I'm not saying it's not possible. Right. Because We're it's not. not so <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It's just not the right move. No. You know, and our ownership has never showed any interest in, in that no. at this point. I'm going to say that any at this point to this point. Now right. that may change, but it all depends. All right. Now, and we can't speak for them either. No, we're not. We're just saying from what we see, right. Saying on our opinion of what we see them do. Yep. All right. Now hear this out because it is an interesting concept. Okay. Moscow. Russia. The NHL would No, the out. NHL has been playing with the idea of moving and creating a few international teams. Well, uh, I support that actually. All right. Now, one of the things that is a possibility, not now, but in the future, it does sound a bit fantasy ish. But the right. NHL and KHL merging. Right. The reason for that being, you are the National Hockey League. Right. We should have teams in Mexico, in all these other countries. I mean, the KHL is talking about opening a team in Africa. You know, they try. Right. Hockey is growing in Africa, by the way, for anyone who doesn't notice, it, it is growing. It is. Yeah. It's gro a growing sport because it's a blue collar sport. A blue sport. sport. <laughs> it's a blue sport. It's yeah, a blue collar blue sport. Blue in the face. Yep. <laughs> and every country, including this one, slowly right. didn't want to get back to that style. Of course. Yeah. All right. Here, this one, this one makes about the most sense there is. Oklahoma City. Right. Yeah. The reason I say Oklahoma City makes the most sense, all right? At the current sitting point, all right? At the current sitting point of the league alignment, Arizona has moved into the central, all right? Now, I'm not speaking on behalf of everyone. But I am speaking on behalf of me. And not John at this current moment, but he can agree right. with me if he wants to. Nashville has no close rival anywhere near them. No. They are alone in the middle of the map. Although it almost looks like we might have a rivalry with Carolina and Dallas coming up this year. We'll have to see how that goes. Dallas has been a rival for many, many years now. But Enter a team into Oklahoma City. Right. Instant rivalry. And what does rivalries create? Right. Fans go to watch two teams beat the holy hell out of each other. Now, yeah. traditional hockey fans, though we may love a good fight every now and again. Right. We're there for the skill and ability. Yeah. I mean, I love a good fight it's every in now the good and times, again. you know. You know, I, I my favorite player growing up was Ken Sabrin. If anybody wants to go to, go to Hockey DB, type in Ken Sabrin. You will see that he is the Admiral's all-time penalty minutes leader with almost 2,000 or 1,500 penalty minutes in a 10-year span. That is a lot of time in the box. Yeah, it is. That's right. a few minutes a game. Yeah. All right. With that being said, you know, think of it this way. The NBA, the Thunder, they've, they've created Thunder. 
or Oklahoma. They really have. They have had some good stuff, but Kevin Durant since leaving has kind of hurt them. It has a little. I've noticed that. I follow basketball too, and I've noticed that. We do pay attention to all sports in this podcast in particularly because we're trying to gauge your markets. Right. What the attitude is, how it's going, and what the morale of the sports fan of the city is. Right. Oklahoma needs a boost. Yes, it does. And sorry about that. Apparently, Google wanted to listen in to our podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Google, for listening. (laughs) Anyway, it, it has proven that it can support basketball. Right. Which Oklahoma is known for its basketball. Their basketball program. Right. They, they also have a professional soccer team down there, don't they? Correct. Right. But think of it this way. Do you remember when the Central Hockey League was still around? Yes. Okay. They had a team there, and they sold out every game. They built the new arena. Uh, what is that? Chesapeake Energy Arena. Back in 2007, 2008, around there, when yeah. Seattle Sonics moved. Now, this is not one of those videos where we're going to talk about sports teams that should be another sports league where they should put a team. Because trust me, I got a lot to say on that market. Trust me, maybe one day y'all get lucky. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe we do exclusive also. one day if we don't have content for you. <laughs> yes, YouTube exclusive purely just off of, <laughs> of sheer boredom. Right. <laughs> we may do it, you know? Hey, maybe uh, you'll get anyway. it next week if we don't got anything. You right. never know with us. So we're not going to throw it out there that it's not possible. But this one makes a lot of sense just geographically for the central for everything that they're trying to do in hockey today to oh, yeah. non-traditional hockey markets and prove that they become they can become hockey towns. Right. Portland. I already said why Portland. Right. The Trail Blazers alone in the NBA. Enough to be said. Let's just put it right like this. All right? Right. Who's the owner of the Portland Trailblazers? I don't remember. Do you know what he owns? No. He owns a billion-dollar wing company. Mm. Anybody care to guess what that one is? The only one I can see everywhere. Anyway, it's a large metropolitan area was at over 2 million people and growing every year. Now, remember, this was in 2018. This has got to be around the 3 million mark now. Right. All right. As we've said, same thing with the KHL, Prague. Same thing. Yeah. Just the same thing. Quebec City, same thing. Yeah. Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah, there's been some rumblings about them. The Utah Jazz are looking to move. Yeah, they are. Okay, because the NBA is failing there. But hockey would thrive. The NHL, when we had the Olympics there in 02, it had more people there in 02 yeah. For hockey games, the Utah Grizzlies, or sorry, Utah Jazz, Utah Grizzlies at the time, they, they were selling out Utah's stadium. Right. Period. It's a correction. It was always the Jazz. The Grizzlies have only ever been Vancouver or Memphis. Oh, unless we're thinking of the hockey team you covered, 
Which no, is yeah, that's there. true. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you're going there with that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the hockey team that you're talking about, which have really cool hockey jerseys. Yes, they do. <laughs> Matter of fact, I think they made me one last year. That's pretty cool of them, even though we're, you know, Florida's our, our arrival to them. They were pretty cool to us, so I, I still hats off to them. Um, you know, Utah has been a, a, a kind of a, a, a like this kind of state. Right. But I think it would work. I do too. San Francisco. No. No. I'm with you. <laughs> Another West Coast team just stop. Right. Now, though it would work, just stop. Right. <laughs> the San Jose versus San Francisco rivalry would be fun to watch, but it no. Was. But no. Right. Zero. In Japan. I will say this, all right? Since this article was written, all right, in 2017, Japan has had an amazing jump in hockey. Yeah, yeah. So has China. I, I've noticed that. The Asian culture has had an amazing interest in hockey because. Yeah. Here's the one thing, and, and, and I can say this about hockey, because I can, it's the only thing I can say about hockey that I can't say about many other sports. Right. We're all inclusive. Your we background are. does not matter. Your no. color does not matter. Your heritage does not matter. Only thing that matters to hockey fans and teams is your ability and skill on nice. the ice. Now, and as we've also learned this year, your um, what you identify as doesn't matter. Exactly. It, it, nothing really matters to the NHL. We just want to play. <laughs> if you want to play the game, play the game. But you have yeah. to. Here's the thing. It, you have to have the skill and the ability. To play at a yeah. level that you don't see often from certain areas. Right. And as this article says, it's a pipe dream. Yeah. But it would make it, it would be interesting to see how it would work. It would be. Now China with the Red Stars have had amazing success. I wouldn't know much about that I actually didn't honestly know that they had a team. They are a part of the KHL. Okay. Um, uh, Magnus Helberg. I don't know a lot of the KHL things. I'm starting to relearn all of this. <laughs> um, so yes, there there is a lot of when you have international play. So if the KHL yeah. and, and the NHL merge, I could see this happening. Until that, right? It's just a pipe dream. I mean, and, and that's the most nice way to put it, you know, because international play, you'd have the league over there, the league over here. And then you'd meet in the playoffs. Then you have the champion over there and the champion over here play for, you know, you have the Stanley Cup over here. You create or take the KHL's prestigious championship. Right. You make it for over there. Once you're over there, you plug the two and you create something. Right. And then you also have bragging rights. And yes, will it make it interesting to see how foreign players and travel work? Yeah. I don't know. But we'll see. All right. Next on this list, Saskatoon. I'm from Saskatoon. Sorry, I had to put the grown ups reference in there. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody hates me for that joke, please. Uh, I, I sorry, had to do it. <laughs> All right. Saskatoon's Metropolitan has about 295,000 people. 
according to the 2016 census. Small yeah. Asia would be the smallest mark, metropolitan market in NHL. Right. For that reason alone. Yeah. yeah. No. I don't see that. Toronto getting a second team. We already went on that. They could handle it. Actually, I think a relocated team in Toronto would probably do better than the Leafs. Probably. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. But for Leafs, for that, for Leafs fans, Sabres fans, and Buffalo Sabres fans, it would be a bit of a territorial issue, rights, and certain other things. So, with that being said, hey. like I said, so we're going to go back here and say the most possible one. Right. With the most possible ones, Salt Lake City, it is possible. With Vegas not being that far away, still a possibility. Right. Go back. Possibility. Portland, possibility. Your heavy front runner, Oklahoma, heavy front runners, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City is a heavy front runner. Yeah. Milwaukee is a possibility. Right. It's a possibility. Mexico City, another possibility. Mexico City has been looking for our, a, a major sports team for, well, decades. Right. So it, I can't phase it out. The NHL was the first to try in Vegas. The NFL followed. Right. It worked. Enough said. Kansas City, another thing. Close to St. Louis, that might create some rivalry, but it would be fun. Right. All right. Possibility, Indianapolis, but the market's small, so slim. Yeah. Houston, that's a front runner. Really, yep. the front runner is because they got money behind them. Portland is the same thing with why there might be a front runner is they got money behind them. Right. Not to mention the boom in the economy there, just based off of what's happened recently. Hartford, possibility, borderline on that strong possibility. All right, Hamilton, count it out, just too close to many other cities that have NHL teams. Halifax, I only say I want it because of the Halifax Highlanders, but if they don't do it, then it's not worth my time. Cleveland, it is a possibility. Might not be a strong one, but it is a possibility. Would make it interesting to see how Columbus ends up. Cincinnati is the same thing. It would be interesting to see what ends up happening with Columbus because Columbus is hurting. Right. Baltimore being the main one here, I think that's a possibility. Not a strong one, but a possibility. Yeah. Austin, a possibility, but not a strong one. Any state, Atlanta is a strong possibility. Reason is, is ever since Batman's been in power in the NHL, and I say power because he's kind of like a dictator at this point, which is why he gets booed all the time. Um, you really look this at last year's playoff said anything, yeah. I mean, come on, Seattle booed him, and they just, he just gave him a team, right? I mean, it's enough said that you know. If, if he's going to try again, it will be Atlanta. Arizona's ownership has business ties to Atlanta. Right. So there's a... Uh, but every time they move to Atlanta, Atlanta Flames, Calgary Flames, Atlanta Thrashers, Winnipeg Jets. So Quebec, if you're looking for a team, just wait 10 years and they'll move to Canada. <laughs> They've already been waiting 10 years. As you guys have been waiting, I'm, I'm meaning to say this. We don't know if they're going to stay in Phoenix. Or if they're right. in Phoenix. We can't say yes or no. I doubt they do. Um, just based on looking at it from a financial point for the ownership. Yeah, you may want to say, hey, we want to stay here. But at the end of the day, certain little things, mostly this, We'll right. call you elsewhere. The yeah. reason for that being is you could sell the team to another market. You could move the team to another market. You know, just don't do what the Milwaukee Braves did. 
The Milwaukee Braves moved to Atlanta thinking they were going to get some hot shot TV deal. Ended up in a bad baseball park where they had to rebuild 10 years later and build a new one. And then 20 years later after that, build another one. Right. Nice. You know, and, it, and it, the money just was never there. No, it wasn't. Uh, and then by the time Milwaukee came in, we were better than the, the Atlanta team that had moved there. Right. And that was only 20 years apart. Yeah. I mean, and they had a good, Atlanta had a good team when they left here. So it was just one of those interesting, all odd conversations. Trust right. me, there's some political conversations in these that we're not fond of. No. But saying what we said about the Asian culture, okay? They've taken hits off of everything that's gone on over the last year and a half. Let's put it 100% into perspective. Just because of those things does not mean it wouldn't succeed. Right. Okay? They would succeed there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They would succeed. All of the foreign countries if pro sports, American style hockey came there, it would succeed. Right. Smaller paced, more aggressive. Oh, yeah, they'd eat that up. But beyond all that, that was part of the whole fun of it all, too. Because the what if, the right. what if of the KHL and NHL. Which, for you guys, is going to be our next video next week. What if? That is what I, me and John are going to have to study. Oh, yeah, fun. Yeah. Because the what ifs. Because sometimes what ifs become reality. And you never know. Right. So, that's all we got for you today. Check out our next video. Well, that'll probably get released before this one. But check out our other video we have coming. We're going to be breaking down our thoughts of the NHL 22 trailer.